Good Lord's House for worship on this 16th Sunday already? Yeah, 16th Sunday after Pentecost, September 20th. Uh, we'll be using Divine Service Setting 4 for order of service this morning. It begins on page 203. Um, we ran out of communion cards, attendance cards, so we're glad you're here. Uh, you won't be able to tell us. Uh, but I did want to share, uh, maybe it's a good reminder time to kind of go through preparation for communion. Um, this is what our communion card says. If you haven't read it, you know, it's probably something you read during the sermon uh, some other time. But uh, Holy Communion, the night before Jesus was crucified, Jesus took ordinary bread and common table wine, gave them to his disciples and said, this is my body, this is my blood. This began what we call the Lord's Supper. We believe that in a holy way, a mysterious way, Jesus is really present in his common bread and wine. We celebrate the Lord's Supper because Jesus said, do this to remember me. He wants us to remember his suffering and death on Calvary's cross, the final payment for all sin. To prepare your heart for Holy Communion, ask yourself these questions. And I always teach these to the confirmation kids. Uh, first question you need to ask yourself, if I'm a, am I a sinner? Uh, Luther's example of that is make a fist, put it in your gut. And if you feel flesh and blood, you're a sinner. Okay. Second question you ask yourself, with the help of the Holy Spirit, do I want to change my sinful behavior? And thirdly, do I believe that common bread and wine can also be the holy presence of Jesus, and by eating, I am filled with his presence and reminded that my sinful past is forgiven. So if you believe those things, come believing and receive the God's gifts. This is only part of what the Bible teaches concerning the Lord's Supper. If you're new to the Christian faith or have not been taught about Holy Communion, please contact Pastor Nelson. He would love to sit down and visit with you before going to communion. So hope that prepared you for Lord's Supper this morning, and we look forward to worshiping. As has been our custom since we're not socializing and shaking hands, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, it's great to be in your house. We know that this is where you feed us with your holy word, with, with your son's body and blood. Uh, we're blessed to be together, and we ask you to bless those who aren't with us yet, and we ask you to be with those who are listening on the radio or watching on YouTube. We thank you for your great love for us in Jesus. We celebrate his death and resurrection on this Sunday, uh, even as we do every Sunday knowing that you loved us so much that he died on the cross so we could spend eternity with you in heaven. Bless us with your Holy Spirit as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask your blessings in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is With the Lord Begin Your Task, hymn 869. We'll stand for the last verse. O come, let us worship the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and be saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we read responsibly the intro. It. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call on the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord? For all his benefits to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my thoughts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call on we continue with the Kyrie on page 204. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. 
Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for the season will read responsibly. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So it has become known throughout the world, the whole imperial guard, and to all the rest, that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be all at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. But yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as we sing the Alleluia in verse. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This will serve as a text for the sermon this morning. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too. And whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour. And the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. 
Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn number 655, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. God's great mercy and peace are yours from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for proclamation this morning is a gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 20 under the theme, Measuring Success. Many studies have shown the value of preschool education. We value that greatly in our household. Um, States have allocated some funds, increased funding, to allow more children to have access to quality preschool programs. Children who attend preschool arrive in kindergarten with much better social skills, higher emotional intelligence, and are better equipped to manage the academic environment. However, some studies have also shown that the gains in language, arts, and mathematics skills wane by the time children complete third grade. In other words, there's not much difference between math and language skills of third graders who attended preschool and third graders who did not attend preschool. Does that make preschool less important than we thought? I think not, right? Uh, With our lead preschool and Mrs. Nelson. Now, by one measure, yes. If we are only interested 
and how well students can read, write, and apply mathematical skills, then preschool may not have much impact in helping children to reach those milestones by the time they are in third grade. On the other hand, if we are interested in measuring the social, economic, and academic success of students on a larger scale, then preschool may be very important. The social and emotional skills gained at a young age can help even to adulthood as one negotiate job interviews, resolves conflicts with spouses or coworkers. These skills can propel success just as ably as writing or math skills, but they cannot be measured in quite the same way. And I know with our elite preschool, one of the best qualities about it is they get to hear about Jesus every day. So how do you define success? Well, the measure of success depends on how you define it and what scale you use to measure it. If you want a nice song that talks about that, uh, uh, look up the song Rich by Toby Mac. You know, rich in love, rich in mercy, rich in friendship. Uh, there's a lot of things you can be rich in. Now, these principles seem to set, be at play in today's parable. The laborers are interested in measuring their success economically. They feel that a longer work day should yield a greater economic reward. This is the model most of us understand in our workplaces as well. Full-time employees earn proportionally more than part-time employees. Um, the understanding is that although part-time employees work just as hard as full-time employees, full-time employees put in more hours. Therefore, they deserve more pay. Few would argue with this economic logic. When the landowner in the parable offers to pay those who have only worked a half or even a quarter of the same day as those who have worked all day, those who have put in the greatest number of hours are upset. However, throughout the story, the question of what the agreed upon wage has been, is, has been averted. The first laborers are guaranteed the daily wage. But we don't know what that is or how it's paid. Is the daily wage paid in cash? Is it paid in food or shelter or some other commodity? Others hired later in the day are simply promised to be paid what is right. What is right? Who decides what is right? Now what if the wage in our parable is grace? If grace meets you where you are and makes you whole, will you complain that some people were made whole thanks to more grace than you received? I mean, I think we could all say in our lives, there's probably some people that do need more grace uh, for us to live with. Um, and God probably says the same things about us, right? Or will you be grateful to be made whole and see others made whole too? Lacking nothing, living in the beauty of being God's beloved child? An economic model doesn't work when we are discussing grace. The beauty about grace is it's not deserved. It's not earned. It seems that our human species is constantly afraid of not having enough. We're afraid that our children do not have enough education. I just saw a pop-up article when I was uh, playing uh, uh, my trivia track, trivia crack this morning. And... Uh, and they had a thing about, you know, this one company advertising, you know, how are you going to have enough money when you retire? I'm starting to think about that. I almost downloaded it right away. You know, how am I going to do things when I retire? Um, we're concerned about our kids having enough education so they can have good jobs and good lives when they get older. We're afraid if we do not work hard today, we'll not have success in the future because success is a limited commodity. We're afraid that we'll not have enough money or time or love. We're afraid we will not have the things we need for tomorrow, even though we have them today. This concern about scarcity is perhaps evolutionary and is an impulse that has caused our species to survive and thrive. We have learned to save for times when resources are less, sometimes even hoard when there would be enough to share. But the kingdom of God doesn't work this way. We were created out of abundance, 
God created each one of us and called us good. We were given more than enough to have abundant lives. And that some have more than others is part of the human plot to save and hoard and keep more than we need sometimes out of sense of justice, sometimes out of fear of not having enough, and sometimes out of sheer greed. This is not part of the created order of the world. This is not how the kingdom of God works. The kingdom of God is like a generous employer who knows there's enough work for everyone to feel useful. The kingdom of God it's like, it's like having enough to be generous and assuring that others have enough too. At the end of the parable, those who are among the first to be recruited to work say, in effect, to the employer, you've made them equal to us. Is that what gives a human life value? Is a human life only as valuable as how much work it can do? Is the amount the person is paid the thing that gives human worth? Is a score on a childhood test what gives a human worth? Are you important because of the kind of work you do? Or how long you've done it? Are you important because of the education you received? Or how well you did? The parable warns against allowing yourself to be reduced to a reward for your work. You're selling yourself short if you do that. You're worth far more than that. The parable warns against feeling like there's not enough for you. God created a world where there's enough for everyone. You are more than a wage. You cannot be measured by the hours that you work or by what you save or by some score you receive. Everyone wants another FICA score, right? You're infinitely more valuable than that. So how will you measure yourself? We use the metrics of the world, the ones that say you can be quantified by your output, or will you allow yourself to be measured by the abundance from which God made you? Have you ever wondered what happened the next day in the parable? You know, sometimes we think of this one day as being one day and everybody went to eternity, right? But I think if they all were working again the next day together, hmm, wouldn't that be interesting? You think the people that were hired for one hour on the last part of the day would show up the next day? You bet they would, right? Maybe the ones that were hired first time of the day be there on time? <laughs> would they be happy about it? Maybe they'd be grumbling a little bit about it? You know, it's the next day, if they all come back to the vineyard, they're all going to work the same number of hours, presumably earn the same wage, perhaps the day after that as well. Maybe they'll work many months together, or even years next to each other. They will have seen their children grow, families change, and personalities blossom. Will it seem petty to have quibbled over the difference of a few hours' wages when you had the privilege of witnessing the fullness of who God created the people around you to be. If you value yourself by how much you earn, do you begin to see the value of others according to how much they earn as well? Do people become objects of greater or lesser weight and worth? Can you subtract the time someone has worked from the days they have lived and determine their value? Can you add up their wages and find their worth? If you are infinitely more valuable than an hour's wage, and you are, guess what? So is everyone else. This can be the only source of jealousy if you believe that there's not enough beauty in the world for each created thing to be filled with it. You cannot store up, save, hoard, or be greedy with the breath of life. It's already abundant in you and in all created order. So live abundantly. Do not allow the social and economic scorecards of human society determine your value. 
you are just as valued and worthy at the end of today as you were yesterday. And there's no amount of work or leisure that can change that. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God pass it all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship with the prayers of church. Our prayer response this morning is, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord and offer to him the petitions and supplications of a people confident of his promise to hear and answer us with mercy. That we may seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him in the day of salvation and be prepared by his mercy for the day of judgment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may delight in the light of Christ and his salvation. And that sinners may find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may hear the voice of God speaking in his word and be nurtured by faithful pastors who preach and teach this gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That this word may be the foundation of the home. That husband and wife may be united in this, in this faith and hope and that their children may hear and be nurtured by faithful parents. We especially lift up the families of those who have anniversaries in our congregation. We ask you, Lord, to bless all those families. And we ask you, Lord, to bless our families again with faithfulness to your word, as that becomes the source of all strength. Let us pray to the Lord. That the church may nurture the lives of our children in Sunday school, in Christ's light, in catechism classes, and that we may all be grounded in the doctrine of Scripture through the study of God's Word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The Lord may bless the missionaries far and near, especially Jenna Englehart and Chelsea Irwin, our adopted missionaries. That he may nurture newly planted congregations. That he may renew those congregations in distress. That those from every nation and culture may be united with us in faith and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may enjoy the blessing of good government, faithful leaders, peace in our land, and peace among the nations. That we may be good citizens and neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the sick may be healed, the troubled know peace, the grieving be comforted, and the dying be delivered to everlasting life in Christ. Especially, Lord, we pray for Pastor Riding, who is recovering at home after being in the hospital in Kansas. Be also with Jeanette Riding, who is in the hospital now. Be with Alan Herbert, Miriam Kruger, Liz Spicer. Be with Bill Kruger as he recovers at home from surgery last week. Be with Whitney Evans, Beth Martinson, Jean Fredrickson, Cody Campbell. We thank you, Lord, for healing for Gary Hines and continue to bless his healing. Be with Lori Hansen, Andy Hoffman. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that my Uncle Tom is doing better. Be with Diane Gearing as she has another treatment. Michelle Bulau, Rich Gates, Jolene Lichty, Carolyn Stewart, Barry Scalberg. We ask you, Lord, that we may all be delivered from fear, anxiety, and despair by God's gracious care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of life, we ask you to bless those uh, in our congregation uh, who have birthdays this week. We ask your blessing upon Mark Fox, William Miller, and Tyler Hilger. Bless these, your servants, with special days of celebration. You're blessed for your love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may commune in faith, that no unrepentant sin may hinder our reception of Christ's body and blood, and that the fruits of this communion may be reflected in a manner of life in keeping with who we are as God's children by baptism and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may honor the Lord with praise and thanksgiving and bring to the Lord the tithes and offerings of a grateful people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have that we may not forget the witness of the faithful who lived and died in Christ, that we may be at last be joined with them in the marriage supper of the Lamb in his kingdom without end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear the prayers of your people, Lord, and grant to us all things good and wholesome, and keep from us all things harmful. Give us contentment, that trusting in your mercy, we may delight in your saving will, where the last are made first by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Normally at this time we would have the offerings. 
Thank you for your faithful offerings and the offering plates in the back of the church there for you to drop off either on the way in or way out this morning. A few announcements. There is a voters meeting. It looks like Neil's coming forward. There's a voters meeting right after church. One of the blessings, we're going to do it downstairs so you can have a chance to grab a cup of coffee, actually be handed a cup of coffee and be handed a roll uh, as we do social distancing downstairs. Um, we were blessed with flowers from Bernice Granberg's memorial service yesterday. That was a special celebration, as many of you knew her, and she's with the Lord now. We look forward to joining her someday. Other announcements? Uh, thank you, Pastor, for the plug in the sermon for our pre- <laughs> ministry for uh, sure. the young children in our congregation. It's a little self-serving, you know. Well, married maybe, to Mrs. maybe a little. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> Actually, it's all to God's glory. Right. Um, we have the three-year-old classes are totally filled for this year. We praise God for that. Uh, there are, is room for three four-year-olds in that class yet. So if you know anybody still looking for a preschool spot, you know, contact Joanna. Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning. Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, right. Yeah. This Saturday, we are planning to have a junk in the trunk fundraiser for the preschool. However, we are a little short on participants. So if you're still interested, be sure you talk to Lisa Harvonic by Wednesday. And that, and that we're going to make a decision whether we actually have enough to make it worthwhile. Okay? So junk in the trunk this coming Saturday. Uh, times are 9 a.m. to 1 here at the church. And we have permission to use the parking lot south of our church parking lot also. So there's lots of space. Okay? And I plan to be there with pumpkins and squash, if you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He has a couple of those usually. Just a couple. Um, handbells. I would like to get a handbell choir going again, but we're short a few people. So if you're interested in becoming part of the handbell choir, please contact me in the next couple of weeks. We haven't set a starting date yet. Okay. You don't have to be an expert in music. Count to four, right? You can count to three or count to four. Okay. It's all you need. Okay. Right. And we'll do the rest with you. So, God's blessings. So, if the hand bells are calling to you, talk to him. Thanks, Neil. Get it. I see there are a lot of children out there today. We're not having Sunday school because of the quarterly meeting. So, we'll have a movie day. And uh, we'll meet at the front of the church. Don't go downstairs. Meet at the front of the church. We'll take your temperatures and give you a mask. And then we'll proceed down to the South Lounge. And... Uh, I think William is going to help pick out the movie to watch. It'll be fun. So your parents can go to the quarterly meeting and not have to worry about you. Uh, we'll be serving uh, juice and donut holes. So come on down. All right. Instead of, and which, we don't know which Lego movie we're going to watch yet, huh, William? Okay. Okay, it won't be Lego. Okay. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> the chairman wants to go to the, the dispute with the Sunday school children instead of the voters meeting. So, Yes. Uh, Lenny. Uh, next Sunday from 5.30 to 8.30 roughly, uh, if it goes longer, it goes longer. We're going to have a family fun night over at our house in our backyard. Uh, we're going to have the fire pit going. We'll be providing hot dogs and buns and uh, marshmallows and playing games. If you have any games you'd want to bring, go ahead and bring them. Probably bring some extra uh, yard chairs. Um, but uh, there'll be extra parking uh, at the high school because we live pretty close to that. The address is in the uh, bulletin. Thank you very much. Very good. Thanks. Anything else we forgot to remember? Uh, normal Bible studies Tuesday morning for the guys at 7, ladies at noon on Wednesdays. Uh, elders are meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, board heads meeting at Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, boards are supposed to begin work on their budgets uh, for uh, the stewardship board as they prepare for the next year's budget. I think that's all the announcements then. I invite you to stand as we sing our offertory hymn. Give thanks to the Grateful Heart, hymn 806.
continue our worship of the service of the sacrament, begin with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him overcome sin and death will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing... Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, same night as betrayed, took bread, and we give him thanks. He broke it and gave it to disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way, I'll take the cup after supper. When we give him thanks, he gives him, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I invite you to please stand as we sing the Nuke to Miss on page 211. Now may his precious body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace and joy. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in his sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may say shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please see it for our closing hymn, hymn number 680. Thine the Amen, thy the praise.